The free throw is one of basketball's most pivotal and underrated of shots. When fouled in the attempt of shooting, a player is given the chance to add between one and three points to his team's score in unobstructed fashion. But what are the chances a player will convert these coveted opportunities into actual free points? I'm Robert Adut from yaymath.org, and that's exactly what we're here to find out in this special edition of Stat Center, brought to you by the Michelson 20MM Foundation. Imagine, there are two seconds left on the clock. The Jordanators are down by one, and Ball Master Flex himself is headed to the line to shoot two. According to our Stat Center statisticians, Jordan's career free throw percentage is a measly 60%. If he makes them both, the Jordanators go home winners. If he makes one out of two, they'll settle the score in overtime. But if he misses them both, it's nothing but a long, heart-wrenching bus ride home full of what-ifs and despair. But what exactly is the likelihood of each of those scenarios occurring? To understand the likelihood of each outcome, we'll use some basic concepts in probability. Probability measures the likelihood of an event occurring. The probability of any event occurring will always be between 0 and 100%. So, we can say that a probability will always be a number between 0 and 1. A probability of 0% or 0 means the outcome will never occur, while a probability of 100% or 1 means it always will. Now, let's begin to understand the language of probability as we let A represent the probability that Jordan makes his first free throw. Let's go, brother. P of A is the probability of event A occurring. Again, in this case, the probability of his first shot. We'll let P of B stand for the probability of his second shot. Now we can create all types of scenarios. Let's say we wanted to know the probability of making both shots, represented as P of A and B. For our calculation to work, we have to assume each shot is an independent event, meaning the result of the first shot has no bearing on the probability of making or missing the second. Now, this isn't exactly realistic because we clearly know that any player at the line is gonna have knowledge of their prior shot, meaning he'll have even more pressure to make the second if he missed the first. In a close game, each shot is the difference between a big W and, oh, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I mean, we lost because of you, but it's okay, moving on. But for our purposes, let's assume that each shot is an independent event. If Jordan has a 60% or 0.6 probability of making each shot, we can say that the probability of missing each shot is 40% or 0.4 by subtracting 60% from 100% or 0.6 from one. Sound good, his Janus? Whatever, man. Now, the most optimistic outcome j Dog can aim for is making both free throws. We can calculate this probability, represented as P of A and B, by multiplying 0.6 by 0.6 for a total of 0.36, or 36%. The second most optimistic outcome is if Jordan makes one out of his two free throws. This can occur in one of two ways, make then miss, where the probability of making the first shot, or 0.6, is multiplied by 0.4, the probability of missing the second, which will become 0.24 or 24%. Oh. 
There's also miss then make, with the probability of missing the first free throw, or 0.4, is multiplied by 0.6, the probability of making the second, for a total of 0.24, or 24%. With both scenarios equaling 24%, we can find the likelihood of either event occurring by adding the two together to 0.48 or 48%. Lastly, we come down to the least optimistic scenario, the dreaded miss, then miss. We can find the probability of missing both shots using what's called the complement method, where every scenario that's not winning or tying is the remaining probability out of 100%. We know from our previous calculations that the probability that Jordan wins the game is 36%, and the probability of tying is 48%. Thus, the combined probability of winning or tying is 84%. Therefore, the probability that Jordan loses the game, that is, neither wins nor ties, is 100% minus 84%, or 1 minus 0.84, which is 0.16, or 16%. Couldn't we just calculate the probability of missing both shots the same way as we did before? I mean, if I have a 40% chance of missing each shot, couldn't we just multiply the probability of each miss, 0.4 times 0.4, for a total of 0.16? Yes, we could. Remember that the main takeaway for probability is that it's the likelihood of an event occurring over a long-term period. Even if J-Dog can make two, three, four, or five free throws in a row, he would eventually miss a few in a row as well. Hold on. Your form's off, young brother. Get money, money, get money! Oh!